Today we're taking a look at the Xbox Series X. I've had it for a couple of weeks now and I've tested several games and features. So these are my impressions based off non-final preview hardware and software. And this is coming from a gamer's perspective, focusing on the things that I care about and I think other gamers would want to know too. It won't be that technical and hopefully I can answer a lot of your questions as quickly as possible. And here's the unit itself. It's smaller than I expected and can be positioned vertical or sideways like so. I wanted to keep this short and talk about the stuff that's most important to me and why I would or wouldn't want to buy this. First things first, generalizing the performance. I've tested a variety of games on here that are backwards compatible and some that are enhanced for Xbox Series X and some that have just been made to work on the new console. They all ran exceptionally well and loaded very fast. I don't particularly care about the quick resume feature, which which lets you quickly switch between games because I would personally never use that and I don't think many others would either but the main story here is that this console has a one terabyte NVMe SSD and that allows you to boot up quickly and load games quicker than on the Xbox One X. Snappy is the word I would use to describe the overall load times. In terms of frames per second, well, if you want specifics, go and check out Digital Foundry on YouTube. But from my experience, I didn't notice many frame drops at 60 FPS on most of the titles that I played. It's very consistent. On the Xbox One X, I think on a lot of games, you can feel the frame rate dropping, especially at 4K. And you can notice the resolution scaling down quite often but on this you're not going to really notice it as much one example i can give is battlefield 5 i've played this a lot on the xbox one x and you can feel the fps chugging down to the 40s and 50s when the battle gets intense but on this console it just felt like a solid 60 and this does open up more possibilities for console players because you can do cool things like change the field of view and not have to sacrifice as much performance anymore more games are supporting this option in the future too like black ops cold war Generally speaking, playing games on a big TV with a controller on this, it felt like I'd brought my PC downstairs from my office and plugged it in. Yet, you're never going to get the performance of an RTX 3080, of course, but it is impressive coming from such a small box. Doom Eternal was a great experience at 4K60, as was Forza 7. Both of those games just looked great with HDR enabled and felt smooth and responsive to play. If I'm being picky, I did notice some of the resolution scaling at times if I looked hard. It doesn't happen that often though, but just keeping your expectations in check for next gen consoles, I don't expect every game to run at a native 4K resolution and constant 60 FPS. There's definitely some occasional resolution scaling going on here, and I've got a feeling that 1440p 60 fps with 4k upscaling will be the consistent sweet spot for next gen games on the flagship xbox and playstation 4k 30 i think you can probably guarantee that with pretty much all of the games higher frame rates are much more important to me anyways as we'll talk about now and this is something that i really care about and i think it will make a huge difference for console gamers 120 hertz on the back of the box we've got an hdmi 2.1 port and if you've got an hdmi 2.1 tv like this one from lg you can run it 4k 120 hertz if you've got an hdmi 2.0 tv i think you can still run that at 1440p 120 hertz on the new console so for us pc gamers we've had high frequency monitors for years so it's not really that much of a big deal but for console players going from 60 to 120 will be a night and day experience i think it's one of the biggest upgrades for the new consoles it's finally here i tested dirt 5 and gears 5 at 120 hertz dirt 5 was a brilliant Brilliant experience at 120. Yes, you do lose some of the sharpness as the game renders at a 1440p target and graphic settings are reduced slightly, but the FPS was solid. It looks like a genuine 120 frames per second and it's very impressive. The Gears 5 Versus mode 2 in 120 FPS, really impressive too. So for console shooter fans, especially FPS gamers, this is a massive upgrade and I'd love to see developers go back and enhance the games that are already out there like Warzone or the new COD this year, Apex, Fortnite, make them run at 120 for the next gen consoles, give people that option to allow them to run at higher frame rates. Because the look and the feel of these games at 120 hertz is just something that you can't explain until you've experienced it. But it is a game changer for console gamers. As I mentioned earlier, inside the box by default, we start with one terabyte of hard drive space. So you've got enough there to install a few games like I've done here. I've got a little bit left over and you do have the option to purchase an additional one terabyte NVMe expansion drive, which plugs into the back if you need more space. 
or you can use an external USB drive, but keep in mind that some of the new and enhanced games will require installs on the NVMe drives to run as they demand those faster speeds. There's the typical suite of apps here too for entertainment, Xbox Game Pass, EA Play, you've got your Disney Plus, Amazon, Netflix, etc. And also, of course, the 4K Blu-ray drive there for those of you that love physical media. The console also supports Dolby Atmos and DTS Audio. As for the new controller, well, it's an Xbox controller in it. The LB and RB buttons are a bit clickier, I'd say. There's a new share button. The D-pad is a bit clickier too. And there's a bit of stipple on the triggers now for grip. It kind of reminded me of the Elite controller. In terms of heat and noise, it's fine. It doesn't feel any hotter than an Xbox One X to me, and it's not particularly noisy either. Wrapping things up, I told you this would be short. There's no doubt that it's an incredibly powerful console akin to a modern gaming PC, albeit in a much smaller package. If you've got the cash to spend now and want to upgrade your current Xbox to one that will make your games look nicer and run better, it's definitely a tantalizing prospect and you can future-proof yourself too. $499 though, that's a lot of dough and for newcomers i don't think there's that many appealing exclusives available here yet most of the games that i played here and upcoming in the future i can play on pc with better graphics and frame rates for example but i am primarily a pc gamer and i'm lucky enough to be able to afford that so really it's your preference the way i look at it if i was someone who played games all the time on xbox and let's say i've got the original xbox one buying this would be a significant upgrade in all areas for me and i'd notice a big difference in gaming performance and features if i was buying today i think it would be more about experiencing my current and near future library of games at higher quality and then waiting for true next gen game launches in october november 2021 next year and beyond if you've already got an Xbox One X, I think the major differences here will be load times, more consistent frame rates at 60 FPS, and if you can afford it, the option to go 120 Hz on console. So there's a few things to consider based on what you've already got. Obviously, PlayStation 5 coming up in November too, and if you could only buy one console and don't have a gaming PC, I really think it's going to come down to the games that you want to play at launch. Because looking at the specs of both consoles, they're incredibly similar, so my expectations are that they will perform roughly the same, but ultimately it's going to be the quality of the games that drive the sales for most customers. And that's all, thank you very much for watching, and do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Once again, these impressions were a preview based off non-final hardware and software. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.